Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. This week, we are doing some scripture journaling. I'm going to walk you through a process that we're going to do in our little check register journal you see off to the side there. I am cutting out some gelatin circles from a DIY gel plate that I made. I'll drop a link if you guys are interested in making your own. I'm going to be using these circles to do some stamping on our art journal page. So I'm cutting out the circles and then I'm going to trim off that part there and use the rest of it as a palette because gelatin plates are wonderful as paint palettes. <laughs> so this week we are going to be discussing Luke 12, 27 through 28. And during the course of the video, I'm going to be discussing the that scripture and I'll jump in every now and again to talk about what's happening on the screen such as right now that is our check register journal that I just showed you we made that um, together on a video I'll drop a link to that and this is where we're going to be doing our art journaling today I am going to be using some blue paints there and my gelatin circles to create sort of a sky an abstract sky effect on the page that's what the first thing I'm going to be doing so while that's happening let's go ahead and look at Luke 12 27 through 28 in the NIV version of the Bible it reads consider how the wild flowers grow they do not labor or spin yet I tell you not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? Okay, so what's our context here? Jesus is speaking to his disciples essentially about very basic things that they don't need to worry about. What they're going to eat, you know, what they're going to wear, those kind of things. And what caught my eye about this scripture, what made me want to dig a little deeper into it is two things. There are two things. The first is the reference to Solomon. You really have to understand the reference to Solomon to understand what Jesus is saying here um, about the wildflowers being dressed better than Solomon. I mean, Solomon in 1 Kings 10, the scriptures tell us that Solomon was greater in wisdom and riches than all the other kings of the earth. So we're essentially talking about the richest man on the planet. And you can guess that that man would be well dressed, right? So the this is telling us that even in all his splendor, so on a fancy day, the wild Solomon was never dressed as well as these wildflowers. And the comparison between the wildflowers and you is what you should take away here. Like these are these are wonderfully dressed wildflowers and they are here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire. You are much more important. So if I've won if I've dressed these wildflowers in, in all of this splendor and you are much more important than them, then you don't need to worry about what you're going to be wearing, essentially. And I mean that's that's the bottom line of it. If you are seeking God's kingdom then you don't need to worry about these very basic things. The, these God knows that you need them and they will be given to you as well. So that was the first thing that stuck out to me was the reference to Solomon. And before I get into the second thing, let's jump back into the video real quick and let's discuss what I'm doing. I, I've made my little blue thing there at the top with my gelatin circles and I've blended it with my gesso now I'm getting out my napkins these are Dollar Tree napkins that have some beautiful flowers and butterflies on them we won't be using the butterflies for this project but the flowers will go there on the art journal page I'm going to separate them so to do that I'm going to first take the plies apart and you just have to see how many plies you have and make sure you remove it so that you only have one that you're working with. This was only a two ply, so that was pretty easy. So I've taken the other ply off and now I'm just going to trim it down so that it will fit nicely inside of our little checkbook journal. Now this will obviously cut just fine with scissors, 
but in order to trim the butterflies from the flowers I'm going to use a different technique I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and some water now the reason why I'm doing this instead of just cutting it is I believe that it leaves a more natural edge and it will blend in better with the gesso and the paint that I have on the page with a more natural edge. So what I'm going to do is get my paintbrush wet and go in and outline, draw sort of a line around where I want this separation to happen. And it's really easy. Like once you get that line there, and they will just come apart. And you can see that they just come apart really easily right where the wetness is. So separate those and now I have my flowers remaining that I'm going to add to the journal. It's still a little bit big, but I'll trim off the extra when I'm done. So to adhere them, I'm going to get my matte gel medium out after everything's all dry. Get out my matte gel medium and just put down a layer of that first. This is my Liquitex Professional, I believe and I'm just going to get a layer of that down. Now to stick the napkin down, I'm also going to be using water as well. Now I'm spraying the back of the napkin with water before I stick it to the matte gel medium. And the reason I do this is wet paper is clingy. <laughs> as we all know, it will cling to whatever it touches. And so it keeps air bubbles from forming because it is so clingy that it sticks right to the page um i found that this is a very effective method to make sure anything that you're mod podging or sticking down like this does not have a whole bunch of air bubbles now i'm just going over the top of it with another layer of matte gel medium and then i'm going to trim it down to size after that i'm going to do some embellishing over the top so while that is going on, we're, we will just jump back in to Luke 12, 27, and 28 to discuss the second thing that stuck out about this scripture to me. And that was the phrase, you of little faith. Now, I know I'd seen that phrase before, and I thought it interesting because it's being used towards the disciples, and I always thought the disciples were men of great faith. You know, they dropped everything and followed Jesus. And so I was interested in seeing why their faith would be called little. And when I studied it out in the Strong's, it is Strong's number 3640, if you also have a concordance, and the definition given was lacking confidence and having small conviction. So essentially Jesus was saying to the, his, that his disciples had a conviction, but it wasn't big enough. They had a belief, but that belief was immature. And so I, when you study it out further, you'll see that this phrase of you of little faith is used in five different places in the New Testament, one of them being Luke 12, 28. The other four are found in Matthew, and they're Matthew 6, 30, Matthew 8, 26, Matthew 14, 31, and Matthew 16, 8. Now, I'm not going to read through those now, but if you look through them, you'll see that they reference some things that we might all be familiar with. They reference worry, they reference fear, and they reference doubt. Why did you doubt, O oh, you of little faith? Why are you so afraid, O oh, you of little faith? Why are you worried about what you will eat and what you will wear, O oh, you of little faith? I think this is demonstrating that even the disciples felt worry, fear, and doubt, right? Because those three things are ubiquitous. They are unfortunately a part of the human condition but there is a remedy, right? A mature faith, not just any faith, not little faith, but a faith that is grown up enough to know that the promises of God can cover any worries. They can cover any fears. They can cover any doubts. Now, one of the ways in which 
one can mature their faith I found is studying the word like we're doing right now that's one of the reasons why I like to do these art journal processes with the scripture is because a great way to mature your faith in a certain area is to get God's promises on it what did God say about it and truly understanding what the scriptures say in the English language language and if if need be in the original languages right so that's why we study that's why we parse that's why we meditate and that's why I'm here with you today so I hope you guys enjoy this and I'm going to throw some music on in the background and go ahead and finish off this journal page and encourage you all that anytime you know you start to feel that worry start to feel those fears that doubt that you consider how the wildflowers grow have a great day you guys see you next time